Hey Magic fans, welcome back. This is your captain speaking here on Captain Clyde's MTG. We're back with more March of the Machine spoilers. Because that's right, I was wrong. They all ain't been leaked. Uh, we'll get into that in a minute. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, try and get to a thousand peeps. I do appreciate that. So, without further ado, we only got a couple to get into today. About 30. But, it's looking pretty good. Uh, and to kind of give you guys an idea of what I was thinking at. So, here was the March Machine leaked numbers I got off of the sites I was going to. Or one of the sites. Uh, and it said they were all spoiled. And then I went back. I looked on a different page. In the same site. And I got this. 120 out of 233. So, they're not all spoiled. Now, I'm not saying, and it's obvious I'm not the sharpest crayon in the box, but I would like to think I know a little bit about math. And those two numbers ain't the same. And also, you ain't got to be the sharpest crayon in the box for someone to still eat you. What hell does that even mean? Anyway, moving on. So today what we're up to is we're up to 154 out of 233. So we've gained about 34 cards to go over. So hell, let's get into it. And just ignore the fact that I can't do math. Anyway, moving on. First card we have here today is Invasion of Xurex. I'm not even sure where this is at. Looks kind of like maybe Ikoria. I don't know. Let's, let's read. So it's a blue, white, and two siege. When it enters the battlefield, return up to one target creature to its owner's hand. That seems like a lot. Um... A mana for a bounce spell. Um, it's got four to, def to defeat. Uh, let's see down here. Uh, if you defeat it, you get an Angel Knight where its power and toughness is equal to the number of creatures you control. Um, blue. This this really seems bad to me. Um, I mean, I'm sure it's going to be fine for limited. Good tempo card. It turns into a creature later. Uh, but it can still be bad if they just kill all your stuff. Um. I mean, I guess it's okay for limited. I don't see it getting any play past that. Not impressed. Anyway, so next we have Invasion of Mercadia. Oh, Mercadia Masks. The days. Oh, the days. Anyway, so for Red and One, you get uh, a battle of four that when it enters the battlefield, you may discard a card if you do draw two. That is amazing. There's already effects that do this that people already use a monopolize on. It's going to be even better if this can actually be something when it's flipped. So the flip side is a 3-3, three, three, which is pretty sweet. For red and two, discard a card, create two one one. Why is it blue and red? Anyway, blue and red elemental creature tokens. Uh, creatures you control get plus one, plus oh, and gain haste until end of turn. Basically, you're making two ones that can attack every turn, uh, but they don't go away. This seems very usable, not just in limited. We're talking standard eternal formats. It's cheap, easy, an easy one to kill, battle siege wise. Take the four off of it. Um, I just don't see how this isn't playable. This is almost, this is like a step down from Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker, the the enchantment one. Only because you can't copy other creatures, but you still get stuff for free. It costs a little extra, but you do get to draw a discard. It costs a little less to come out, so it's very similar. So uh, I don't think it's going to see as much play, but I think it will definitely see play in the right kind of decks. This is a pretty sweet card. Next, we have Omen Haw Hawker. Ha oh, oh, an Omen ha is that is that like when you hawk up a loogie and it? You read the bones with anyway. So for one blue, you get a one one. For tapping it, you get a colorless and a blue. Spend only uh, this mana only to activate abilities. Um, that's not bad. Um, could be worse. Could be better. It is a cellophid, so that's kind of cool. I haven't seen one of those in a while. Um, it's gonna be probably not the best thing in the world. Uh, maybe commander. Eh. Next we have Vorinclex. Dun dun dun. Check this bad boy out. Two green and three for a 6-6 six, six, trample reach. What? And when he enters the battlefield, switch the library from the two forest cards, reveal them, put them into your hand. Why does he do that? I mean, nothing like a 6-6 six, six monster that does ramp, I guess. Jesus, busted. Anyway, uh, and since it costs five, that two extra mana gets you to seven. This means you're only one away from doing the flip, which is for two green and six, you can exile it, return it, and it becomes the Grand Evolution, which is, one, mill ten cards, put up to two creature cards from among the mill cards onto the battlefield, busted. Two, distribute seven plus one plus one counters by any number of creatures you control. You've already put two on the battlefield. They're going to be large. 
And then three, until end of turn, creatures you control gain one. This creature fights target creature you don't control, exile the Grand Evolution, then return it to the battlefield as Vorinclex, which he then enters the battlefield and gets you two more forests. This is going to be one of the best versions of, of this Praetor set. Um, I see this being easily a $40 card. He, Vorinclex is already a thing in several formats. He's really good. This is going to be just a bomb in every format. Uh, I mean, maybe not Eternal because it's not. it costs too much and it takes too long to do its thing. But even in Eternal formats, this is still a thing. Just saying. All right, next, moving on. We have a Captive Weird. That's what I used to call my ex. Anyway, um, they called me that too. Anyhow, so for one blue, you get a 1-3 Defender. For a red or two life and three colorless, you can transform it into the Completed Conjurer. Because that's not weird. But um, bump Anyway, uh, which is a 3-3. Three, three, and when a creature transforms into the Completed Conjurer, uh, exile top card of your library. Until the end of, turn you may, until the end of your next turn, you may play that card. I mean, for limited, it's fine. Um, standard, this might be a little rough. I mean, it's cool for four mana to card off top your deck. You could just do better for four mana, I think. So this is probably just a limited, uh, a limited card, and, and probably a good one at that. To be honest with you, it's got a lot going off for it. Next, we have dog pile. I mean, pile on. Um, black and three instant with convoke. Hello. Destroy target creature or planeswalker surveil too. This is good. This is the kind of card black aggro has been looking for. Hey, can't get through with those one drop two one black creatures? That's okay. Tap them and just kill stuff instead. Yeah, this is an amazing card. Uh, it's easily gonna be five bucks, I think. Uh, it's gonna see play in all kinds of formats. So yeah, that's just that's a simple one. Next we have Olsloth, the Shattered Spire. So. This legendary artifacts are green and one. Uh, if you would, if one or more plus one plus one counters be placed on artifact or creature you control, that many plus one plus one counters are put on it instead plus one. Uh, so for a green and one, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature artifact you control. Activate only the sorcery. So for two green, you get two counters. That's amazing, and it's an artifact, and it's got cycling too. So yeah, if you play four of them, you got three in your hand. Guess what? It's time to start ditching them in the graveyard. Get better stuff. This is going to be an amazing card. It's going to be great in Commander for all those proliferate doubling season decks. Yeah, this is going to be pretty popular, I believe. Just saying. Mirror Shield Hoplite. But dump bump. That like good old Hoplite G, does he have prowess of some, uh, in some way, shape, or form? Well, let's look. So for red and white, you get 2 2 with Vigi. Not bad on par. Uh, whenever a creature control becomes target spell or ability. Oh, from a backup, you may copy that ability. Oh, my. Uh, you can choose new targets for that copy. Uh, this ability only triggers once per turn. Wow. So you can lay something with backup, target this, and the creature with backup gets the ability as well. This is insane. This may cause a backup deck to be built, um, but it's really going to depend on how well the backup cards are in red and white for this to be a thing. But... I mean, let's be honest, the prowess decks of the past were really powerful when they got all their synergies going, so this could definitely be a thing. Next we have Elven Vantguard. Did they spell that wrong? Anyway, it's a black, green, and one Phyrexian Elf. Uh, it's a 3-3. Three, three. It's good, good rate. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you get to Incubate 2. That's pretty sweet. Uh, for five, you can transform an incubated token, double the amount of plus one plus one counters on it. That's amazing. This is going to be phenomenal and limited, um, hands down, just by the ability to make uh, for five mana to make a four four. And if you have that incubate ability going in your limited deck or your draft deck, yeah, just on par. This looks like a superstar, uh, but probably it might be as far as it goes unless there's enough incubate to make a standard deck. Other than that, I don't think it'd go anywhere. Next, we have Copper Host Crusher, whatever that means. We have a Phyrexian Bear Rhino, because why not? Two green and six for an 8-8 eight, eight Trample Hexproof. I mean, sure, if this is your jam, play it. Uh, it's not good, it's not bad, it's just all the pain if you get on a battlefield or not. Just saying. All right, next we have the Sky Cleave Aerolus, a blue and one for a 2-1 Flyer. Great rate, that makes it a good card for limited. Uh, for a green... 
or two life and four colorless, you can transform it into the Skyclave Invader, which is a uh, two four flyer. That when it transforms, you, when it transforms, you may look at a top card of your library. If it's a land, put it onto the battlefield. If you don't put a card onto the battlefield, put it to your hand. Um, I mean, limited at best, I mean, probably commander. Uh, it's only drawn one card, only a two four flyer. It only happens once. Um, it's okay. Next we have Seraph of New Capenna. So for a white and two, you get a two two flyer. Great rate uh, for a black or two life and four. You may turn into a three three flyer that whenever it attacks, you may sacrifice another creature or artifact. If you do, it gets plus two plus O oh to end a turn. Oh, this is sweet. This is like a uh, fallen angel. This is really cool. I like this card. Good flavor. Really good flavor. Uh, not as powerful, probably, um, because it's going to take way too much mana. Uh, but I do like the fact you can get it out early and have a beater and then make it something better later. So maybe it's got some legs. Uh, definitely a limited all-star, but eh, we'll have to see. Next, we have Glistening Deluge. Two black and one. All creatures get minus one, minus one to end a turn. Creatures that are green and or white get an additional minus two, minus two. That's a pretty good three mana wrath uh, that's going to take care of a lot of these mono decks. However, notice it says green and white. Uh, we've yet to see one that's going to deal with fast red decks. So that may be a weakness in this format, but we'll have to wait and see. Moving on. Invasion of the Ragna. Actually, it's an invasion of uh, Ragnatha. Ragatha? Anyway. So this siege has is a five defense. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, it deals four damage to another battle or opponent and one damage up to one other creature. Now, this is cool. So now you're playing sieges in your siege deck to kill other sieges. They're going to be siege decks. It just makes sieges and, and things happen. Um, because when this thing flips over, it becomes a four for three mana. It becomes a four, four human monk with prowess. And if a non-creature source you control would deal damage to a creature, battle, or opponent, it deals that much damage plus two instead. These battles are not legendary, guys. So after you get one of these things flipped, this thing's now dealing um, six damage, which will kill almost any battle and or creature. Um, I'm sorry. It will deal six damage to a battle or opponent and then deal three damage to any one target creature. This is an amazing card. Um, this this card alone makes me think battle decks will be possible. Um, I mean, we'll need better, we'll need other good battles to go with it. But as far as good battles go, this is a serious enabler. So moving on, this battle we have the invasion of Kamagawa. So blue and three for a battle of four. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, tap target artifact or creature opponent controls, put a stun counter on it. Not too shabby. Uh, when you kill it. You get a 2-3 flyer uh, that deals combat damage to a player or battle. Draw a card. Red-blue, maybe? Huh? Huh? Are you feeling me? Uh, pretty good card. Next, we have Invasion of Innistrad. Oh, it's a mythic. This is going to be a doozy. So, 2 black and 2 for a 5 battle. When it enters the battlefield, target, opponent, target creature and opponent controls gets minus 13-13, and it has flash. Wow. This is a thing. And if you manage to kill this thing, it turns into an enchantment, apparently, that uh, Deluge of the Dead enters the battlefield, create two 2-2 two, two black zombie creature tokens. Black and two, exile target card, exile target card, just a card, from a graveyard. If it was a creature, you get a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token. This is amazing. Just hands down. Standard all-star. Gonna be good in commander. This might even see some limited play. Well, it's definitely gonna see limited play. This might see eternal play depending on how the formats evolve around these sieges. Uh, but after seeing this, I'm thinking, mm, red-black siege? I'm sorry, that red card's just way too good for me. This is going to be a $20 card. Easy. Next we have Zeros Strobe Knight. I know I said that wrong. Uh, blue and two for a 2-2 Flying Vigilance. Wow, that's good. Uh, tap it, create a 2-2 White and Blue Knight Creature Token of Vigilance. Activate only if you've cast two more spells this turn. This is amazing. Uh, limited all-star, probably a standard all-star too, if you can get your jig going and start pumping out dudes. Uh, I mean, if you, if you just have four of these guys and nothing, that's, and nothing but one mana draw spell, two mana draw spell cards, and you start making two twos all day long with vigilance, I mean, he's still going to punch you in the face and then he's going to make a dude. Just saying. 
Uh, this seems really good. Uh, and er, I mean, e eternal formats, maybe not, but maybe so. I mean, eternal formats are notorious for just puking their hand and making this thing good. But at three mana, it might be hard to get out. So uh, I don't think maybe eternal formats, but commander, limited, standard. Yeah, I can see it being played everywhere. Next, we have the gift of completion. One black and one enchantment. When gift of completion enters the battlefield, you get to incubate three. Very nice. Whenever a Phyrexian you control dies, surveil one. Eh, probably limited all-star at best, but not bad. Next we have the Invasion of Kaldheim. Why is it red? Anyway, Kaldheim was the Snowlands. Anyway, uh, red and three, four. Uh, when Invasion of Kaldheim is a battlefield, exile, exile all cards from your hand, then draw that many cards. Until the end of your next turn, you may play cards exiled this way. Um, that's really good. Especially with the other red one that comes into play that you can literally just destroy this when you play it for three. Um, and then it flips over to Pyre of the World Tree. Discard a land card. Deals two damage to any target. Whenever you discard a land card, exile top card of your library, you may play that card this turn. Jesus, this is insane. Wow, why is this not a mythic? This could really get some shenanigans going. Um, wow, could this get shenanigans going. Um... This card's good, guys. Don't sleep on this card. I have a feeling this is going to be very popular. Surprise, this is not a mythic. Wow, is this good. And yes, I am now... I am dead positive now there is going to be a battle slash siege deck that plays nothing but battles and is going to be red something and it's going to be it's going to be rough. So anyway, moving on. Next, we have the Invasion of Karsus. Uh, two red and two for a four battle. When it enters the battlefield, it does three damage to each creature and each planeswalker because why not put some red wrath in here while we're at it? Um, and if you manage to kill it, which you can with the one for two mana, uh, you get a refraction elemental, which is a four four that has a ward pay two life. Whenever you cast a spell, it deals two damage to each opponent. This is just nuts. This is also bonkers. Again, I, yeah. Good card. There's going to be a red, uh, black, or red, green siege deck, and it's just going to be bananas. B A N A N. Oh, anyway, moving on. I won't do that to you. Next, we have Furnace Reigns. Uh, red and two, sorcery, gain control of target creature at the end of turn, untap the creature. Till it turn, it gains haste. Whenever, well, whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player or battle, create a treasure token. Uh, basic grab and snap, grab and stab. Um, Treasure Token's cool. It is one cheaper than the normal cost, so that's kind of cool. It'll definitely make it see play in limited, but that's probably about it. Next, we have the Oracle of Tragedy, also known as my exes. Anyway, uh, one blue and one for a 1-3. When Oracle of Tragedy enters the battlefield or dies, you get to choose one. Draw a card, discard a card. Not bad. Shuffle up to four target cards with mana value three or greater from your graveyard into your library. Interesting. Um, this is going to be great and limited just for, you know, deck manipulation and maybe even standard, uh, could be good in, in external formats. It's cheap enough for two mana. It does the draw discard thing, which may be a thing. Like there's lots going on here. I like, um, yeah, this could be a good card. Next we have seeing double blue and two instant spell can't be copied. That's probably a good thing. Um, choose one. If an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, you may choose both. Copy target spell, you may choose a new target for the copy, and create a token that's a copy of target creature. Alright, so it's kind of a fork slash Vesuvan. Wow, power creep's getting out of hand. It's even cheaper. Uh, the only drawback, they got have eight or more cards in their graveyard. If you're playing blue, they're going to have cards in their graveyard, you're going to counterspell everything. Uh, it's going to be a good card. Uh, it's going to be in lots of different things. Um, I don't think it's good enough for Eternal, because I just think... I just the mana the mana the base mana is so good in eternal formats to make sure you always have blue. I just don't see this better than the normal blue cards that we have now. Um that's just me, but I mean who knows. So moving on. Next we have Deep Root Wayfinder, blue and green. It's a two three, uh deals combat damage to a player or battle, surveil one. Then you may return a land card from your graveyard to the battlefield tap. This is bonkers. This is really good with that red card that lets you discard land to 
uh, you know, deal damage because you just punch him in the face with this thing, get it out of the graveyard, and put it into play. Yeah, this is an amazing card. Not to mention, there's all kinds of other things you can do with this. This, this, this is, uh, it's, it's a two mana crucible of world with legs that's gonna kill your opponent. This is so good. Uh, easily a five dollar card. Don't sleep on it. Get you a couple of them. It's gonna see some play somewhere. I see this seating play in all formats. I mean, Eternals. Eternal formats, Commander, Standard. It's two mana for a 2-3, for God's sakes. It's just good enough. Period. Next, we have the Ancient Imperiosaur. Boy, that's a picture for you. Anyway, so two green and five for a 6-6. Six, six. Has Convoke. That makes it a little easier to get out. Uh, Trample, Ward 2. Interesting. Ancient Imperiosaur enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it for each creature who that convoked it. So, I would normally say... Okay, so I got two things on this. One... This is a really good card. Two, this if you're going to give us this, you might as well just give us Mana Elves. Because now you're just saying any green creature we cast is a Mana Dork, and it's going to make this thing freaking humongous. Um, I'd really just give us Mana Dorks. It's, I mean, because now the green creatures that have toughness are going to deal damage. Um... Yeah, anyway, we, we give us elves back. Don't do this. This is this is too much. Anyway, moving on. Next we have Temporal Cleansing. I did that once. It was not pretty. Um, one blue and three, a Convocable Sorcery. Okay. The owner of target non-land permanent puts it on their library second from the top. Oh, so it's a Tesperi. Tesperi? It's a Teferi Sorcery. Tesperi. Tesperi. There you go. It's combined two words. Why not? Um, seems pretty good. Uh, probably be good on limited. That's probably about it, though, because once again, blue cards just don't... Blue convoking is just not a thing unless you're doing it with artifacts. The whole blue convoke creature thing is just not a thing. Next we have Shieldred. So, it's a mythic. Is it as good as all the other Shieldreds? Let's take a look. So, for two black and three. So, it's not going to fight with the normal Shieldreds, which is kind of interesting. They'll fit in the mana curve with it. Uh, we have a four or five menace. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a non-token creature or planeswalker. That is pretty good. Uh, for a black and four, uh, you may flip it over to Scripture of Truth. Oh, wait a minute. Exile and activate only, only activate this ability as a sorcery and only if an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard. That's interesting, but okay. Um, anyway, when you flip it over, for one, choose up to one target creature or planeswalker for each opponent and destroy them. Oh, wow, that's good. Two, each opponent discards three cards, then mills three cards. Holy cow. Three, return all creatures in all graveyards to the battlefield under your control. Exile. Woo. That's why they want eight things in the graveyard before you can flip it. This is going to be a $50 card. Um... Eternal formats, possibly, because you can cheat it out. It, it's fine to cheat this out. Just, it's just perfectly fine. Um, Pioneer, limited, all-star, standard. It's going to be everywhere. Commander, guys, sit down. I seen you jump up when we started reading this thing. Calm, your, calm down. You're embarrassing yourselves. Anyway, moving on. Next, we have the Dusk Legion Duelist. That is the ugliest vampire I've ever seen. Anyway. One white and one for a 2-2 two, two Vigi. Uh, whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put on the lead, on the duelist, you get to draw a card. Wow, it only triggers once each turn. I mean, there you go. That's a little something for them uh, counter decks to help you draw cards. That's new. And why wouldn't it be white? I mean, white's notorious for drawing their cards, right? Moving on. Next we have... Surge of Salvation. One white instant. You and permanence you control. Gain hexproof till the end of turn. Prevent all damage that that black and red sources would deal to creatures you control this turn this is this is dumb uh so this is what's going to stop red rush uh because you're going to gain hexproof to all your stuff and you're going to block and kill all the things and it's a fog um i think uncommon's a bit a bit too low for this uh this is going to be very popular uh buy them foils of this while you can this is going to be one of those very expensive foils moving on Next, we have the Astral Wingspan on a Rhino. 
okay. Anyway, one blue and four, uh, it convokes because why wouldn't a blue card convoke with creatures? Uh, enchant creatures, when they enter the battlefield, draw a card. Creature gets plus two, plus two, has flying. Uh, good limited card. And that's all. That's the only place this is going. I'm, I'm not going to go repeat the same thing over again. Anyway, Mutagen Connoisseur. That sounds disgusting. Blue, green, and one for an 05. Flying Vigilance. That's funny. Uh, gets plus one, plus O for each transform permanent you control. Okay. So you have to play this with Incubate decks. Is blue, green really the Incubate deck? Eh, anyway. Uh, limited all start best. Next we have Zamone and Dinah. Look at them little fellas. Or girls. Or them. They. He. It. She. The, those. Anyway. Blue, green, black. 3-4. Human Dryad. Uh, whenever you draw your second card each turn, target opponent loses two life. You gain two life. Tap. Sacrifice another creature. Draw a card. You may put a land card from your hand on the battlefield. Tap. If you control eight or more lands, repeat this process once. Wow. Um... This is a really good card. Um, I could see some standard play with this, um, but it'd be a little rough. This is definitely a right-up Commander's Alley. This is the kind of shenanigans you want going on in Commander decks. Um, I mean, you go and play one anyway, so who cares if it's legendary? Um, I don't think it's good enough for limited. It may be good enough. I mean, it's, it's great for limited, sorry. I meant eternal formats, but when I say that, I, I'm really referencing modern sadly because this reminds me a lot of a card that you might see in like legacy because it just it, you draw a card put the land into play it's a three mana three four like these are the things you're looking for in life you can't bolt it you have to swords it like that, it's really weird to say that it's not good enough for modern but it's probably good enough for legacy uh, but then again, you know, because of the initiative decks, you know, a lot of cards that get played in Legacy don't get played in Modern. So, brave new world we're living in, boys and girls. Anyway, moving on. Next, we have the Tiller of Flesh. Looks more like a... I don't even know what that looks like. Anyway, white and three for a two, four. Whenever you cast a spell that targets one or more permanents, incubate two. That's good. So, I mean, you could definitely make an incubate deck, but this, is, this ain't going to hold up to what's going on in Standard, in my personal opinion, because... So much shenanigans. Moving on. Good and limited. We have changed the equation. Um, just like solve the equation, right? Uh, blue and two instant. Counter target spell, mana value two or less. Counter target red or green spell, mana value six or less. This is really good. Um, wow, is this good. This makes me want... Is, is this good enough for modern? I mean, two or less, you just counter it. And if it's red or green, it's six or less. Like, like wow, I'm, I'm really torn here. This this is probably not good enough for standard. This is probably more of a modern eternal format kind of card where mana costs don't get high. Wow, that's kind of weird. All right, well, moving on. We'll see how that plays out. Um, oh, never mind. That's it. So thanks a lot for staying, guys. Uh, I do appreciate it. As always, don't forget to subscribe. It really helps me out. It helps out the channel, and I appreciate it. Those who have, thank you again. You want to do some more to help out the channel with a little bit of money, there's links in the description to the eBay store, Patreon, yada, yada, yada. Until next time, remember to be kind. And as always, I hope to see you across from the game table.